Bruchem Aboyim. Tonight's lecture um, will be on a topic that's near and dear to my heart and uh, one that I've been through and um, something called charity. In Hebrew it's called tzedakah. It's interesting that how Hebrew and, and English are not necessarily the same in definition. The word charity in English comes from the Latin word meaning to love. Tzedakah comes from the word in Hebrew from tzedek meaning righteous. So it's not something you do because you love someone. It's something you do because it's the right thing to do because it's righteous. The reason why um, this is a topic that's so near and dear to my heart I was a kid who grew up on welfare and um, my first decent clothes I went to a kid's house who had died and his parents were giving away his clothes and um, I remember I went to a school where they had a charity drive and they had a board of every, all the monies that people would give for the charity drive and my name was on the board I was in the class and I was at the bottom of the whole thing I didn't have any money to give for the charity drive and I was bothered by it and frankly I guess embarrassed by it and I remember saying to God make me wealthy and my name will be at the top and thank God he made me wealthy and my name's at the top and so the reason again so I know a little bit of what it feels like to be at the bottom and to be at the top and it's funny because the Gemara says the two things that it's hard to be in this world are rich and poor common denominator time what do you do with time but that's a lecture for itself the um, so the question becomes why do we give charity what's the essence of it so one of the things that we believe in Bidrachov is to go in his ways meaning to emulate God God is charitable Therefore, we are charitable. If God only gives to people that deserve, then we're all in a world of hurt. God graciously gives to people that don't deserve, which is most of us, most of the time, and gives with an open hand, and gives with kindness. And we really take it for granted. We almost think that we have it coming. So we need to get some idea. Not only is the charity done to be godly, it also, we are become an advocate for God. When a person's poor and no one helps him, no one takes care of him, then he feels that God has forgotten about him. Not only is he poor, there's no benefit, no way for him to be taken care of. When people take care of the poor, then they feel as if God has extended his hand. Now it's interesting, when people see people that are poor, especially righteous people, there's a big question is God punishing? So when someone has to take alms, a person has to take charity from someone, is he being punished or not? And the answer is it's not so simple, and that becomes the key with everything. That we try to figure out what God's trying to say, and generally we get it wrong. Because many times uh, we have the thing, and we'll talk about a little later, when we talk about tithing, that the priests and the Levites were giving the tithing from the land and it looks like it was a handout but the truth of the matter is it's as if they owned the land and we were sharecroppers so to speak giving them their due so that's the other way of looking at it that God found a way to take care of his special people and what God has done in many in most cases is given us the opportunity to do something righteous by using our money in a proper way if you ever been to Israel, one of the things that many people complain about, and I was one of them, is there are a lot of poor people around with their hands out, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming. And this happens in certain communities that people live in as well. And this happened to me I first time I was in Israel. And as much as I enjoy giving charity, it became a bit overwhelming. And to be honest with you, I was a little perturbed. And I remember I was in Yipmei Shorim with my son about 1.30 in the afternoon at a bookstore buying something. My son, who was six at the time, tugs on my sleeve and says, Dad, I want to give tzedakah, I want to give charity. 
and a big smile goes on my face, sure, why not? What could be easier in Maya Shoram than giving charity? So I tell the shopkeeper, I'll be right back. And my son and I walk out into the neighborhood. And we walk and we walk and we walk and we walk and we don't see one per per poor person. And from that day on, I've never complained about anyone who's come to me asking for charity. Because the, that's what they say heaven's about. You have all this money and nobody's poor. You have nobody to give it to. And it's really a great mitzvah, especially when you've been on the other side of having to take it. How much better it is to give than it is to take it. The, um, so when we give, we become an extension of God. God gives us the opportunity to fulfill this mitzvah. Have you ever been in a synagogue and seen a, a father give his son a coin to put in the pushka into the charity box? And it's interesting. Children don't walk. They run. They run to go everywhere. We walk. We barely crawl, especially when it comes to a good deed. But they run to the pushka, and they put it in. There's so much joy hearing it drop. And this wasn't their money, and they didn't get anything for it. And that's kind of what God does with us. He gives us money, and he gives us the ability to do a mitzvah with it. And people, and there are many people, and you know, some people even have the theory that if God has made people poor, who are we to argue with? That it's not for us to change that, which is ridiculous. Just like a person who's sick, we're supposed to heal. A person who's poor, we need to help. And what's very interesting, they tell a story of Reb Zusha. Reb Zusha was uh, a great tzaddik, a great righteous individual. And there was a time when he would travel around the incognito, and he looked like an itinerant beggar. And he um, came to a uh, town, and he looked so raggedy that as they, there was a custom Friday night that all the poor people would pray in the back of the synagogue. And then the shamus, the sexton, would designate people to go to different people's houses. And when he was through telling everybody where to go, he looked, and Mabzusha was the last one. So the sexton said, okay, you come home with me. And Reb Zushu was sitting at the table as the sexton was getting, the shamus was getting everything ready for the meal. And he saw Reb Zusha, And Reb Zusha was <laughs> kissing himself. <laughs> and the sexton just shook his head and he thought, I brought home a Michigan. I got a crazy person here. My luck. And uh, Reb Zusha looked over. And he saw the sexton looking at him with that look. And he began to smile and he said to him, do you know why about an esrig, the um, fruit that we use with the lulav on, on Sukkot, that all year it stays on a tree and nobody pays it much attention? But one week, one week of the year when we use it for Sukkot, everybody looks at it and holds it and kisses it and embraces it and shows their friends. It becomes very special. He said, I'm a nobody and a nothing. But you see, you brought me home to your house to do a mitzvah. And I'm an object that you're doing the mitzvah through. So I am a dover shibigadusha. I'm a holy object. I'm no different than a safer Torah or a parrot tefillin. Shouldn't I kiss myself? And when, you, when a person re puts out his hand, or better yet, if he doesn't have to, but when you help someone, they become an object of sanctity. Because you're doing a mitzvah through them. How great a mitzvah. Such a great mitzvah, the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, that Mashiach will come from one mitzvah and one mitzvah alone, the mitzvah of tzedakah, of giving charity. That's how great the mitzvah is. And it's interesting. You would think if there is such a great mitzvah, there would be this long recitation of blessings and preambles that would be said before you do it. We make blessings before we do everything, but not tzedakah. When we give tzedakah, we just give it. There's no blessing. We don't wait. In fact, there's a blessing in the Shemona Esri that ends with the word Melech, Oheb Sedaka Umishpat. That God loves righteousness and judgment. And it's interesting because there are two ends of the spectrum. Mishpat, judgment, no matter how many times a judge has had the same case, the Torah says, take your time, look at it. 
it may be different. You might see something. So slow down. Sadaka, do it with an alacrity. Because that person it may be life and death, the money or the food that you give them and what they need. So the quickest mitzvah, the slowest mitzvah. And since we have to do it with an alacrity, don't want, God doesn't want us, the rabbis didn't want us, spend all this time getting ready while the poor person needed the money. So we do it without a blessing. And it's interesting that the word dam, which is blood, and damim, which is money, you can hear this, the words are the same, dam and damim. When a person gives money, he really gives his blood. It takes all of a person's effort to make a living. And when you give to a poor person, you're actually giving your blood, so to speak, to that person. You know, there's a joke told by uh, Jack Benny, who was known to be very frugal, an old comedian. And uh, his skit was a man with a gun says to him, your money or your life. And Benny doesn't move at all. He would always be like this. And he's like standing there. And, and the thief says to him again, your money or your life. And Benny doesn't move. And he said, don't you hear me? I said, your money or your life. He said, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I mean, that's how important it is. And even today, people do that. People will fight with someone who puts a gun on them rather than give up their money. But success really comes from God. So what does God do? God really gives a person, since everything belongs to God, everything we have is his. So what God does, just to take a figure, we believe that a person should give miser, which is 10%. Imagine if someone were to come up to you and say, I'm going to give you $100,000. Well, you would be very happy. But on condition that you give that person, or those 10 people, you take 10,000 out of the 100 and give it to someone poor who needs it or an institution <laughs> who would argue you get to keep 90 in fact they tell the story of a, of the rest of a Rashi of a man who was on his deathbed and he told his son that he had a field that every year his father had given him the field and he was going to tell him exactly what his father had told him that the field produced a thousand bushels of wheat and every year he gave a hundred bushels of that wheat to charity he said, son, my father told me that. I followed it, and every year the field produced a thousand bushels of wheat. I'm telling you the same thing. And that year, the son, after his father died, gave a hundred bushels of wheat. But it really bugged him. So the next year, he decided, hundreds a lot. He'll give 90. And the next year, the field only produced 900 bushels. So then he only gave 80. And the field only produced 800 bushels. And it finally happened that his family sent him presents because the field only gave 100 bushels of wheat. He became the priest. He became the Levite who gets the gift from the field. And they, that's why they sent him gifts to say you must be holier now that this has happened. He switched places. So when God gives us money, what he does is part of that money is not ours. I'm a businessman. There are millions of dollars that go through my hand. It doesn't bother me because I know it's for the paying for my, my utilities, paying my labor, paying my food costs. What drops to the bottom is mine. And I don't lament the fact that all this money went through my hand because it wasn't mine in the first place. And that's how a person needs to see charity. A, that it's not yours, and B, that you have the honor and the privilege to be able to help someone else. And what a nice feeling it is. Believe me, being on the other side is not so nice. And the real key becomes is for us to not only give, the word the, the, the Pusik says, open up your hand. That you can't have a set amount. When you close your hand, every finger is the same length. When you open it, they're all different. Open up your hand. Give to each person what they need. And when a person does that, when you open up not just your hand, but you open up your heart, then what happens is you feel good. And what you do is also you make a Kiddush Hashem and you also show there's a God in the world who sends his messengers to take care of people. And God willing, next week, what we'll do is continue on this theme and talk about the honor and privilege of a person being able to help another person and to do it in an honorable way. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbos.